Hello YouTube, David Harry here. <laughs> right, in this video, I'm going to take this microphone and turn it into this microphone. <laughs> and you're going to be looking at that going, Dave, do you look exactly the same, you tool? What are you talking about? <laughs> right, what it is, I've got these little Siren microphones which are absolutely fantastic for modifying the dead super simple right so what i'm going to do is take one of them and convert it into an omni okay so basically when these come as standard these are super cardioid now just for like testing purposes so far i'm going to like swap out the capsules so this one here is actually an omni right now because i've actually done this bit after i've just done the bit about what I'm about to show you. So anyway, in this video, I'm gonna show you the process for the modification. Now, I'm using a Primo EM272 uh, Omni Capsule here. It doesn't matter. You can follow this guide and just use whatever 10 millimeter ECM capsule that you want to. So that can be an Omni, could be a Cardioid Super, could be a figure of eight. Apparently, figure of eight ECMs, little tiny 10 mil ones are a thing. I never knew that. Anyway, yeah, so just use this as a guide for anything that you might want to do. Also as well, I will be showing soldering and stuff in this video. I am the world's worst at that particular task. So whatever you do, do not pick up any bad habits from what I do. What I say is good. What I do isn't particularly good. So listen to what I say, but don't do what I do, if you don't understand what I'm saying. Anyways, just quickly, there's four of these Sarah mics, right? I did actually order five. only managed to get all the four. Um, now, what I'm going to be doing with these over the course of the next month or so is butchering more of them. I'm going to try two Omnis on a, on a space stereo bar and try to do some kind of wide stereo stuff. Dare I say what we, what we would probably call a fake binaural. That just basically means binaural as far as using two spaced Omnis in the correct position without the dense light mass in the middle, which emulates the human head. Right, so I'll be doing something like that so I can stick it on top of a camera camera and things like that and a few other things as well to do with different cardio capsules I'm probably just mostly going to stick to Primo however there are some other capsules that I found which are okay but like I say what I'm going to do here just use this as your loose kind of like guide to whatever it is that you may want to be doing and yeah I'll just dive into this there will be some chapters and things and whatnot and uh, yeah I'll come back at the end when it's done Okay, so the first thing that we need to do here is to remove the tiny little screw, which is the only thing that we have to remove to open up the microphone. So what we do here, we just take the foam filter off the end, and then underneath here, as we should be able to see, there is one tiny little screw. Now, the size of the screwdriver that I'm using here is this little piece here, which... I don't know, is that even a universal measurement? Who knows? Anyway, it's called PH1. Hopefully that is something that's universal and means something to someone else. However, it is, look, tiny, tiny end on the screw there, like that on the screwdriver, so that's all you need. Now what you do, you just get in there and then just whiz out the screw. Hopefully things are kind of staying pretty much in focus here, although the description of unscrewing a screw should be extremely straightforward even without pictures okay so there's the screw in fact keep that screw somewhere handy don't drop it on the floor especially if you've got a carpet right and then just pull the end of the body off like that there we go and as we can see inside here there is the capsule on the end now the cool thing about this body right let me use the screwdriver actually this here and this here are metal and then what it is, that just holds the actual capsule on the end. Then what happens is when you put the end of it back on, that just holds it into place further. Now, if I just squeeze it out a bit, we will see on the end, it's got like slightly recessed top and bottom there. And that's just so that the capsule can't like move backwards further down the inside there. Now also the capsule has got like this little like foam thing around it. Now I'm going to use a little rubber ring on the capsule that I'm going to put on. However, what you could do here, you could strip that off. 
it might be glued all the way around. You might have to like, you know, pry at it a little bit, but you could take that foam piece off there and put that foam piece on the capsule that you're going to put in. But nonetheless, that's how simple and straightforward it is to get to this part. So what I'm gonna do now is just desolder the two cables that we can see on the end there that are on the capsule. Now to desolder the two cables, you go ahead and do what method suits you best. However, I'm just gonna use a clean tip here just to heat it up and then pull the cables off. So what I've done here, I've basically just cleaned and tinned the tip on the actual you know, solder iron here, and I'm only using a 15 watt iron. Now the reason for that is, is because you know, you can damage these capsules that easy and I wouldn't want to damage the capsule, even the one that I'm going to remove, because I may end up using that capsule on something else. So just be careful not to overheat at this point. So like I say, go ahead and do, do it whatever way you feel is the most comfortable way for you to do it, for you to do it, sorry. However, I am just going to try and get in here what it is. The camera's blocking me for you. I can't see anything. So try not to leave your iron on it for too long. So try and be as quick as you can. As soon as it melts, just take the cable straight off. And then again with the second one there, there we go. So that's the two pads actually nice and clean there. We can go straight onto that with other cables. And I suppose also as well, the two cables that we've took off there are kind of like pre-tinned as well. So we probably don't need to tin them when we put them onto the new cable. Sorry, I meant the new capsule. We are not putting cables on cables here. We're putting cables on capsules. Actually, just before I go any further, I'm going to do a continuity test here on the cable. So I'm gonna bell out the cable here, just so we can work out what the polarity is of the wiring. So what I've, what I've done here, I've got my multimeter in buzzer mode. So have a listen. There we go, buzzer mode. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to check to see where tip of this cable that I've plugged in is gonna end up. I think it's gonna be the red cable. So what I'm gonna do, I've got the red cable in the jaws there on my little, my little snippy pin to things. So I'm gonna to just touch the tip here on this cable. Then I will just go to the red cable there. And there we go. So what that means is the red cable is the live cable. Okay, so I'm now going to tin the pads on my capsule. Now your capsule that you use, because don't forget you may not be using the same capsule as me. You might be using different Omnis or trying out cardioids and stuff. Now your capsules may have pre-tinned pads on, but this one doesn't. So I'm gonna tin the pads here. Now the thing that you've gotta be very careful of is not to damage the capsule with heat. So again, I'm using a 15 watt iron here and just kind of like keep the contact to a minimum. Also, if you've got some way to like, you know, apply some form of heat sink to the capsule, do it. Right now, I've got it clamped with inside some pliers here. As we can see, I've got a rubber band on the end here. These are basic bulldog pliers, you know, those big thick heavy ones. Now, this is not by any stretch a heat sink, but two things, it keeps it in place as well as I'm doing it. But because there is a, a bit of metal contact here with something that's like heavy, dense, metal and cold it will act as a bit of a heat sink as well so maybe not perfect but you know we'll try it anyway so that might be a, an idea for other people to try out as well so i'm just gonna like use this solder here i'm not gonna tell you what solder to use because people always bitch and moan about these things so just use whatever you want now what i'm gonna do is just put the solder on the pad and then kind of hover over it with the actual layer uh, with the tip of the soldering iron. And then what I'm going to do is just hopefully hit the pad at the right point where the solder will just flow onto the pad. Now give us a second because all this talk and I need to just re-clean my tip again. Give us a sec. Okay, so I'm going to have to be quiet now as I go for this. So give us a second. Okay, so there we go. There's pad one done. Now let me go for the second pad. And there's pad two done. Now the thing is what you will find is that the solder will flow onto the pad very easily once it's melted. So like I just done there, just put, just touch the, you know, your solder to the pad and then hover over it a little bit with the tip of the iron. But again, and I need to overemphasize this point loads, do not leave the tip of your iron 
on the pads or anything like that. The most minimal of touches is all, is all that you need to do. What will happen here, you can damage the pads, right, or damage the actual capsule by overheating those pads. Now, you know, I'm definitely going to make a point of this, actually. I know this gets boring, but soddy. Because if you damage the capsule, you may not know you've damaged it because it won't look damaged. But the thing is, things like tone will go all weird and stuff like that. And that's not tone from Tone's Adventures, by the way. <laughs> because <laughs> tone's not weird <laughs> the thing is if you're not careful you will definitely do something to to like the electronics with overheating and being serious now it will have an adverse effect on the tonal characteristics of the capsule but as you can see just then that went on dead easy and dead quick okay so i'm now going to attach the cables to the actual capsule now now usually i would put these in my little tool thing and just grip them and then apply them that way but seeing as we are now inside this little vice system which is acting like a bit of a heat sink i'm going to persevere and struggle to see if i can do this now don't forget the tips of the cable and is basically already pre-tinned as it were because we just took it off something now with this again same thing minimal contact with heat low wattage uh, solder iron all the same things apply here as well for all the same reasons as well to do with overheating now what i'm going to do is have to be quiet actually i'm just going to clean and tin me tip again okay so i'm going to be quiet as i do this then hold on Okay, that looks like my positive one is done. Don't forget, positive is red. Now, I'm just going to go for the black cable here, which is going onto the other pad, which is going to be your negative or your shield or whatever you want to call it. Now, give us a second. Okay, that seems to have gone on fine as well. Oops, spoke too soon. Take two, hold on. Okay, so take two on the black cable was kind of like mostly successful. At least it stuck to it this time. Now, don't forget, I am terrible at soldering. Yours should look a bit better than this one or a lot better than this one. So what I'm going to do now is just continue with putting it all back into the microphone. So what I'm going to do now is just fit this rubber piece here around the capsule and this rubber thing here, it, it's basically like a little washer or a grommet type thing. And all it does, it just basically increases the diameter of the microphone capsule a little bit. So it fits into the end of that little mic grip bit there. Now, if you don't have one of those little washers, you can, of course, strip the one off the original capsule and put that on. You will need something like this definitely to go on, because as I showed you before, that's like a tapered end there, and it definitely requires something that's slightly bigger than 10 mil, and that's what we get with this little rubber washer. On that point as well, I'm not entirely sure if that's just there as a gripping mechanism. I, th I, I would think it is, and that it's not there for any kind of air thing or anything like that because ultimately the whole thing is earthed anyway due to the earth on the cable being part of the actual body system and i will double check that shortly because i'll do another continuity test however nonetheless we need to put this on so let me see if i can do this in one take here whilst i'm holding everything and trying to concentrate on talking when i should really be shutting me trap and trying to put this on properly. Oh, look at me struggling like a little baby trying to open a bag of sweets. Hold on. Oh, can I do it? Hey, I might have, I might have done this. Hold on. Okay, yeah, so there we go. I've got it on. And then all we do then is we just pop it into the end here. And what we will notice is it kind of goes all nice and firm in the end. It grips in really well like that. Okay, so that bit's done there. And then all we do now is just slide the outside of the mic body back on again. So that'll just slide straight over. And as you can see there, the two holes line up. And then you just go ahead and you just screw that screw back in that we took out before. Unfortunately, <laughs> I've dropped my screw on the floor and can't find it. So I'll be back with you shortly. Actually, that was lucky it wasn't on the floor. It was under the box for me screwdriver bits. Right, so hold on, let me just get that in there. So yeah, just screw that back in, and then you've got one freshly modified microphone. Now let me just do a quick continuity test for something here as well. Okay, so I'm just going to do a continuity test here for ground, or earth, or black, or minus, or negative, whatever you want to call it. Right, so I'm going to go straight to the back of the body here, and 
there we go okay so there is continuity straight to the back of the body however when i touch the body nothing now that's like some kind of anodized coated body there as well because if i do it straight across the body itself nothing okay now the only reason why i'm doing this is only because i want to see if the capsule was being floated inside the body for any particular electrical reason it doesn't appear to be because like i say i can actually get ground straight off the back there and that back is joined straight to the case there's nothing that i'm doing here actually <laughs> that means anything for this video this is just out of my own curiosity why, why i've done it and there might be something in there which might be like piquing the curiosity for other people as well oh, shut up dave right let me just get to the end of this video and show you the microphone okay so to the end of the video after it's all being magically done right so again two microphones here one is the super one is the omni you can't tell the difference because physically there is no difference and i will start doing a bunch of things like i've been saying here through the video and what not to do with demonstrating certain things with these and just testing in general as well some of the things that i do um even if they don't sound that good i might i might do them and show them anyway just because if I can show things that don't work, it might help people to avoid doing stuff as well, not waste the time and things like that. Let some clown like me spend days doing it so you don't have to. Um, like I say, you know, the video is more of a general overview guide as well for people who are interested in these things. And if there's one take from this video, hopefully it is that this microphone is absolutely superb for like butchering and modifying. When I say the microphone, obviously I'm not a huge fan of the capsule. I'll have to try the capsule on other things just in case the position of the capsule or a particular type of scenario might work better for the capsule. Not entirely sure just yet. But anyways, there we have it. There will be a whole bunch of things coming up and all that crankiness as well. There's also stuff to do with some of me, uh, me cheap BM700, 800. I'll do them videos quickly soon. Uh, Basically, the overview videos actually may be similar to what this is, where I just basically show the modification, and then I can refer back to it in the future to say to people, well, look, there's a video here which goes into a bit of detail about how the modification is done, and then I don't have to keep repeating myself constantly through a number of videos. So with this video, I will refer back to this video anytime I do stuff with these sirens. And don't forget, at the same time that this video has gone up, a, uh, a very quick prelim will also have gone up with it, and I will be doing more with the Omni off this. Anyway, David, shut up. You just bore the pants off, people. And David Harry, thank you very much for watching this video. Take care, and goodbye now.